guys, my name is Kevin. I'm CEO of Savage Tacticians, and I'm here with Ron, the inventor of the Riker grip with Riker USA. If you don't know what that is, Ron, we'll give him a little show. This guy right here. Today's video, we're gonna get back to basics and just go over uh, transitions from rifle to pistol. And then a little later in the day, we're gonna switch up, install the Riker grip, and see how that feels with those transitions. Again, what we're doing today is uh, nothing new. We're just getting back to basics, like I said. Um, maybe we're gonna put something out that you can utilize and take to the range, and maybe it, it works for you, maybe it doesn't. So uh, it is what it is, but uh, ready to get started? Let's do it. Right, guys, so we're going to cover some techniques for transitioning when carrying two weapon system being your primary being your shoulder fire carbine platform and your secondary being your pistol super important thing to remember is always load the secondary first and the primary second the reason is you get busy you're training real world scenario whatever it, the, the case is you will load your rifle and majority of the time guys are going to forget to load their pistol you're going to come on out you're going to retrieve your pistol and you're going to put the booger hook on the bang switch and you're going to hear the loudest sound of your life nothing so always go secondary first primary second all right opposite but it works and it'll keep you uh keep you loaded and keep you on point so we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, we're going to load up pistol then rifle and we're going to do some transition drills we're gonna shoot until we run out of ammo essentially with our rifle. Why would we do a transition drill? The answer is our primary weapon system has a stoppage of fire, whether that be a malfunction or we run out of ammo. Situation will dictate if we transition to our secondary being our pistol or we take a knee, we seek cover and we change max and we get our primary back up. Obviously we, always, we want our primary in the best working condition that we can and keep rounds going away from you and not at you. All right guys, so eyes and ears, the range is hot. What we're gonna do now is we're going to prep our weapon systems for the transition drills we're getting ready to run. We're gonna, always gonna start, like I said, we're gonna come on out with our secondary, get a good nice sight pitcher, come back, get that fresh source of ammo, and before we holster, we always get one last sight pitcher. Now we're gonna go and get our primary up, get that fresh source of ammo, and come to a good low hang. Now, when you're setting your equipment up for a transition, it, it depending on what you're doing, depending on if you are coming from a vehicle, if you're in the capacity of law enforcement where your carbine is generally in the car until you need it, just it, it, it all depends. But that being said, you have to practice how you fight and there's no substitute for fundamentals and a strong foundation of fundamentals of marksmanship. And that just comes with some simple drills, but more importantly is having your equipment work for you and not against you. You need your equipment to add value to your life and that value is keeping you alive, allowing you to you know, do your job better if this, is, uh, if this is beyond a hobby, if it's your profession. Setting your equipment up is you always want to, don't be afraid to change your equipment. Don't be afraid to uh, modify things to make them work for you. When you're setting your stuff up, I like a nice tight sling. I run a two-point sling, uh, the Riker sling, and it works good with our grip. But more importantly, that when I'm transitioning, the way my sling is designed, I can come on up and I can get a nice clear path to present up to the target. When I transition, when I transition from rifle to pistol, why I like a tight sling is I don't necessarily want to have a really loose sling and transition and I'm walking and I got this rifle is bouncing all over the place on me. This could impede accuracy when I'm shooting and moving with a pistol. It could pretty much hit me in the junk and well, nobody wants that, you know, and it's just bouncing around. So having a nice tight two point sling, keeping it in tight for transitions, it's just a solid place to help you keep positive control and help you put effective rounds downrange. Transition, one, one. All right. All right, so our first drill. 
We're gonna shoot controlled pairs on two targets. So we're gonna come on up. We're, we each of us is going to engage a target that's in front of us that presents itself to us first. Two rounds, transition to the other target, shoot two rounds. We're going to have a stoppage of fire. We'll transition from that time, from our primary to our secondary and pick up at the target that we finished at with one round and transition back to the target we started with, with one round. Then we'll get our guns back up and we'll continue to train. All right, shoot ready, stand by, up. Techniques for carrying your sling and transitioning. There's no shortage of information, but there's also no shortage of equipment options now. And I, I like to say, you know, you find the good and the bad. One of the good things about, you know, the post 9-11 attacks is the tactical firearms industry exploded. And we now actually, I think, have sometimes almost too many options as to what we can put on our guns for accessorizing them but it is nice to have those options. So that being said, our sling, running our transition sling, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. Depending on your type of sling, if you're using a traditional nylon sling, some guys will transition will transition with a, a, with a loose hanging sling and come down and hold it against them while they come on up and present to the target. <clears throat> with a Riker sling, which is an active sling, this allows me to transition and I can, as I have a stoppage of fire and as I'm transitioning from primary to secondary, my hand remains on the Riker grip. I'm pulling my rifle out of the way as I retrieve my pistol and present it up to the target. Another option could be, depending on your type of weapon, and I grew up on an MP5 with the big banana mag, so we were always taught rotate the mag well away from your secondary. This way, in the event that you're in a tight, confined space, you eliminate the chance of potentially coming up and hitting your secondary on the magazine or the pistol grip. And that is negated by rotating away, pulling behind you, and coming on up. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. You have to find what works. When you find what works and you get your equipment set up, you need to rehearse, you need to practice, and you need to just get those fundamental reps in. Dry fire with your sling, dry fire with your, rep, your, your rifle to transition to dry fire with your pistol. All these things are going to establish a solid foundation of fundamentals of marksmanship. All right, so we're gonna go through some more transition drills, but we're gonna to add to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on up and we're going to simulate a, uh, we're gonna simulate an equipment malfunction where our optic doesn't work. We're gonna present up on target, come off safe. I have no dot, on safe transition down. Come on up, press for time, take that well-aimed shot with your pistol on steel, come back, get your rifle back up, give it a little tap, you have your dot back and follow through with two on each target. Up. Nice. So just another training technique. When you're training and you're trying to work in good fundamental repetition uh, transitions or anything, you don't need to max your rounds out. So with as expensive as ammo is now, just do low round counts, two, three, four. You know, don't and and don't necessarily always, uh, you know, make it even. Have an unscheduled reload. Just sit there, don't count. Put a hand, just grab a handful of ammo, put it in the mag, and train that way. Same with your pistol, because it's all on the, on the back side of this. It's really good to have a short loaded pistol mag, which will force at the end of the drill, and we'll get to this is, oh dang, I just shot two rounds with my pistol and went to slide lock. Now I've got to get this gun back up, then i got to get my rifle back up. So it's just other ways for you to train under stress and manage stress while keeping a strong fundamental base of marksmanship. Keep yourself guessing because you don't know when your primary or secondary is going to go down. Nope, anything can happen.
So some transition drills that we can do. Uh, we, had, we had just previously mentioned what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on up, we're gonna have a rifle mag of two rounds and our pistol mag of two rounds. We're gonna come on up with the attempt to engage two targets with two rounds each on our rifle. Our rifle's gonna have a stoppage of fire. We're gonna transition to our pistol to the other target and shoot two rounds. At that point, our pistol is going to go to slide lock. Now we're going to have to drop a mag, retrieve a mag on our pistol, get it back up into operational order, ensure that the threat no longer exists, then transition and get our primary back up. Now this is gonna be a good key indicator where I was talking about earlier is making sure your equipment works for you and not against you. So this is where you want to, if you're running a tight mag, you want to make sure that your equipment is intelligently set up on your person so that when you are retrieving all your mags, it's super easy, you're not working around, you're not fighting through through your equipment to, you know, to get back into the fight. All right, stand by. Threat. So on that drill right there, we came up, we shot two, ran drive with our primary, transitioned to our secondary, shot two, ran dry. Both of us stepped offline, remaining spatially aware to simulate potentially moving behind cover and concealment to give us the most advantageous position to get our secondary back up into action and our primary back up into action. Once we had both weapons loaded and back up to 100%, we stepped out behind, from behind the simulated cover and re-engaged with our primary weapons. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to, we're going to run a, a standing to kneeling drill and what it's gonna do is it's gonna get us shooting on two different planes with both weapon systems. Simulating that we're behind a vehicle or some sort of cover or concealment that we could take a knee that's gonna break up our outline and allow us to manipulate both weapon systems and continue to return fire. So we're gonna come on up, we're gonna shoot two, we're gonna to transition to a kneeling position. As we're transitioning, we're also working to get our primary out of the way and getting our secondary up so that when we hit a solid kneeling position, we can engage with two right away. Once we've secured and eliminated the threat, We'll holster, we'll get a little bit low to break up our profile. We'll get our rifle back up into the best operating condition we can. And we'll say just nice and quietly, if, if there's two people there, we just say standing, stand, and then you're gonna follow up with two shots on target. Now, a couple things to, um, a couple things to look at. Kevin is right-handed, right eye dominant, both weapons on the same side of his body. I'm left-handed, both weapons on the same side of my body. So it doesn't matter if you step forward or back, your terrain is gonna dictate. So you don't want to step into your cover and essentially like hit the barrel, hit, hit, hit the side of a car where you can't pull your rifle up. So you always want to be aware of that. You don't wanna do what's called crowding cover. You can step back. So if I was to step forward, my strong side knee is, is gonna be the one that's going down. If I had to step back, I'm stepping back with my strong side. This is just gonna allow me a little bit smoother draw and presentation with my secondary than necessarily coming from this position here. All right, so again, your equipment, setting yourself up for success, making your equipment work, uh, work for you, not against you. Stand by. Oop. Stand. Standing. All right, so shooting and moving. A lot can go wrong with shooting and moving. You need to be able to shoot and move accurately and effectively with rifle and pistol. 
And what we're working towards is everything that we've done this morning, building up to a culminating drill that you guys can do that incorporates shooting, moving, moving to cover, and transitioning from primary to secondary weapon system. But one of the things that we're going to do when we run this drill is we're actually going to run straight to, the, we're going to walk straight to this first target, but all of our engagements are gonna to be to the right. Now this is on purpose so you're not sucked into the target. We want you to be able to keep your situation awareness, your spatial awareness, while walking to a point of domination, but being able to have full range, uh, full field of view of your engagements as, and the targets as they appear to you. What you don't want to do is potentially, as I'm moving, now I'm shooting here and I'm walking offline and I'm going all goofy. So you want to be able to walk straight and then just transition forward and back. It's going to look a little something like this. Assault. Okay, so we're going through our shooting and moving drill moving on a single plane to a point of domination, engaging multiple targets with our primary. Primary is going to have a stoppage of fire. We're going to move to the first available piece of cover and concealment that we have, bringing in everything that we've done, standing to kneeling, transitioning, getting that secondary up, using cover to get the secondary back up if you have to get the primary up, but then return fire from the primary, from the kneeling position, then changing planes, shifting targets, and finishing off with two from the standing position. Kevin's gonna run through this time with, we've got his rifle set up with the direct M-Lock mount, which is an accessory on Riker USA and the Riker grip. One of the benefits of the Riker grip is speed, accuracy, and stability. No glove, no heat, and it, uh, especially with him running a suppressed rifle, this gun is gonna put out a little bit more heat. This gives your hand the perfect amount of stand standoff to keep you from getting burnt. Assault. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to do a shooting on the move transition drill. We are going to have a point of domination we're gonna to walk towards while engaging multiple targets with our primary. When our primary runs dry, we're gonna to transition to our secondary and continue to shoot and move and close the distance. For safety, because we're shooting steel and paper, once we cross the 10 yard line, we are going to transition to paper targets forward of that for safety purposes so we don't get any splash off the steel. Eyes, eyes and ears are imperative anytime that you are shooting steel. Assault! All right, guys, that's it for the day. Again, nothing new, nothing fancy, nothing, you know, not reinventing the wheel, just giving you some basic drills, some transition drills, shoot and move drills, something you can take to the range, practice, and improve upon the skills you already have. Um, also, I want to thank Ron for uh, coming out here and running us through this. Again, 
Riker USA website will be down below. Check out their grips. Super awesome, first time running it and I, I'm pretty impressed. So uh, once again, man, thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it.